There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not the same for me My journey started in Oban, which is a beautiful little town place next to the sea. Once there, I tried to look for somewhere to wild camp for the night before getting the ferry the following day over to Albara, where I would start my 155 mile trek of the Hebridean Way. I am now at Castle Bay in Barra. As you can see, it's absolutely stunning. Got a beautiful evening. Just been to this little food place here, had a curry, and got myself a little beer, uh, sky black. What I'm gonna do is try to find somewhere to pitch for tonight and wild camp. There's a few spots I've got in mind. I've just met this guy, Zach, from Australia who's just cycled the whole route and he's coming down so north to south which is amazing he said it's a great trail and yeah he's got everything on his panniers on his bike which is really cool and making me want to get into bike packing i really miss cycling so maybe that's something for the future a bit of bike packing get myself a touring bike with some panniers right i am now heading to the other side of this little bay so Gonna head on over here, sun's still shining as well. Apparently um, it doesn't really get dark, like it doesn't get dark. <laughs> so that is gonna be mental for the next two weeks. <laughs> Hebridean way. I've just started. It's mad to be here. Look how stunning the beaches are. I was tempted to go for a little dip. Woo! First big ascent of the day and I'm sort of feeling it because my bag's the heaviest it's going to be the whole trip. First day so you get in my hiking legs back, getting the strength in them. But I think the reason I've really wanted to do this trail is because it's such a beautiful place, the Hebrides. It's full of so much history. It's stunning. There's something really different about this place and something a bit ancient and mystical, I guess. And it's so remote and how the people live are really different.
Being distant from mainland Scotland, the Hebrides hold an element of mystery towards the island and their people. The Celts settled on much of Scotland before the Hebrides were invaded by the Vikings between 700 and 900 AD. A lot of Viking culture is left throughout the islands, leaving their powerful legacy for centuries to come. An example which stands very clear is acres of forest burnt to the ground so islanders couldn't build boats and later cleared for grazing land and crops. As much as the Hebrides is so beautiful, it is left barren and scarred from the mass deforestation that's gone on throughout the years. If you've noticed as well, I've actually gone out and got one of these, joined the club. Basically Jake bought one and I was literally sold, like how good it is to put your, your phone, I put my camera in there, my tripod, money, you name it, I've got everything in it, even the little guidebook. So it's perfect, it's right there. The remoteness of this place is absolutely breathtaking. The silence often deafening with the lack of flight paths and people. There's houses scattered few and far between and sandy beaches are in abundance, hence why it's called paradise. For a few days it definitely felt like I was in Spain with the intense heat and the beautiful beaches as well as the turquoise seas. Bang! Another way mark. Lovely. <laughs> it is so beautiful. I can't get over the weather. I've never seen Scotland this nice, I don't think. Being back on the trail definitely rekindled why I'm so drawn to the outdoors. The simple and minimal lifestyle is so attractive for me and I felt so alive whilst being out there. hack the midges anymore so I've come in and hid away from them. Like most trails you normally get a little guidebook and I've also bought paper maps and I've got GPS on my phone and plus this trail is so well way marked like if you compare it to the Cape Raft trail it's got a lot of way marks and established route. So today's stage this morning I started in Castle Bay and then I got the half nine bus to Vatase and that was the only bus that runs. I think there's two buses a day or one bus. So it's really diverse and it's a beautiful island and even the little um, settlements are really like weird. It's got a strange feeling because some of the buildings there's no one in them. They're just derelict and they just let them go. Morning, you lovely people. It is day two on the Hebridean Way. Not too shabby views, absolutely stunning. I got up at five this morning, it's a pretty early one, and I'm heading over to Ardmore to get the ferry from Barra to Eriskay. The trail consists of 10 islands involving two ferry crossings and a number of different causeways. This one is my second of the 10 islands, which is Eriske, with more sandy beaches and lovely weather, which I knew deep down wouldn't last forever being in Scotland.
Day two in Spain, loving it. <laughs> it does feel like I'm abroad, it's really weird. Didn't bother with sun cream. When you come to Scotland, you don't really prepare for sun, you prepare for the rain. So I've literally got everything I need for the rain and not the sun. I'm now leaving Eriske and I'm on the crossing over to South Uist. So this means sadly back on tarmac, but literally, where's the cars? but this is the only way of getting over to South Uist. It had to be done, didn't it? Little swim. I'm gonna dry off now and probably hit the trail again. Definitely know that my feet are a bit done in because it was so sore going in the salt water. The walk was almost like a pilgrimage for myself. A chance to think, breathe and reflect. A chance to connect with myself, but also with the land I've grown deep respect for. My experience was like going back in time. My imagination activated as I pictured Viking boats traveling towards the beaches, about to conquer the islands and its people. Whilst there, I met a Canadian guy who was doing a section of the hike. I found it truly amazing how he was chasing his ancestors' history and travelled all this way. When bumping into him a following time, he had told me that he had discovered his great-great-great-grandmother's croft house where she used to live, and this is dating back years and years ago. I found it amazing that he had rekindled this and found what he was searching for. It is so true how history can definitely shape the future. So going back in time and looking back is definitely giving me some foresight and some perspective, as well as giving me insight on my own future and the world around me. It's crazy to think that one day I'll soon be history, just like everything around me. That's why I'd like to leave a legacy or an impact whilst I'm here, even if that is just inspiring people on YouTube. The time is four o'clock. The heat is absolutely mental. It is so warm. I've had to put this towel on me to block the sun and put my trousers on just because I'm burning up like a bloody tomato. Right, another update. This weather is seriously getting to me. It's so warm. I've literally just had to go door knocking for some water because I've run out. I obviously need some for later for drinking and my freeze-dried meal. But it is so warm and obviously there's no cover walking on the beach, so it is intense, <laughs> burning up. I've probably put some more layers on now because I've taken some off now, I've stopped. But put some on and cover up from the sun. I feel like I'm in Romania now. It's such a weird feel in this place. It is literally like Romania. Shortly after, I found somewhere to pitch for the night and then put on some well-deserved food. You cannot beat a real term at freeze-dried mill, especially when you're pitched up amongst sand dunes looking over these beautiful views. Like always, I set up my sleep system, looked over maps and the route for the following day and just chilled and sorted my feet out that soon became very grim. I'm now in my tent. This is night two of the official Hebridean Way. What a day it's been. It's been beautiful. I've just been looking at the book again and sort of thinking about the route. I think what I'll do is probably do either a video or a sort of blog on my route and where I've stayed and transport and travel because I think a few people wondered all about that because I think once you buy this book and if you follow the way marks on the route and things like that it's pretty straightforward I really didn't know what to expect with this trail I wasn't I was really unsure um, I just really wanted to visit the Outer Hebrides and then I saw that there was a walk that done the whole lot and I was like ah oh, two and two I'll travel to the Hebrides and then I'll do a hiking trip as well. Today was hard going for me. It was just so hot, like unbearable at times and finding water on the trail was quite tricky. 
So I probably would recommend getting maybe a bladder and filling a bladder up and carrying extra water because I literally had to go door knocking for water in the end. And obviously it's quite hard to purify seawater. Uh, I'm not going to do a Bear grills while I'm out here. It is really nice trail, it's beautiful. I'm a bit gutted with some of the parts that are on the road because they sort of link the cycling and the hiking route in together you do tend to go on the road a little bit but then like I've said the road is fairly quiet and nice anyway another thing I am it will literally be this bright until like 11 12 tonight it's absolutely mental the daylight hours last night I had to put my Kendall mint buff over my eyes because it was just so bright like this and I just couldn't fall asleep which is crazy and the more north I go and the more we're heading into summer solstice, the more light we're going to get.